Hello, geometry, and welcome to lesson four, six, talking about congruence and overlapping triangles. If you thought triangle congruence was exciting, interesting, now just wait, because now your pictures will be complicated because your triangles are going to overlap. So I know we've talked about some triangles touching and sharing aside. Now they're going to overlap one on top of the other. And you'll see in the problems we do, the easiest way to uh, you know, take care of that is by separating your picture. It takes a little extra work, but we'll do it. Okay, so example one says, identifying corresponding parts, figure A, B, C, D is a rectangle with diagonal segment A, C, and segment B, D. Why is it important to identify corresponding parts of overlapping triangles? Well, let's consider the uh, two triangles, A, B, C, and D, C, B. So consider triangle A, B, C, and triangle D, C, B. Right. I'm going to draw them separately. So ABC is this bottom left triangle. It is a right triangle at angle B. So here's A, B, C. It has a right angle marking and a congruent side marking. And then DCB is the same triangle, but it's just on the right side. So it's a reflected version of ABC. DC is the right angle. And then B, and again, we have a congruent side mark there. So what if I want to prove these two triangles congruent? Well, let's go through the proof, right? So the first thing I know is I know that angles B and C are right angles. Now, because of the complicated picture up here, I'm going to say that angle ABC three letters is congruent to angle DCB three letters. And again, that's because all right angles are congruent. And there's a pair of angles. Now, we could go the HL route with the congruent uh, legs and hypotenuses, or we can go uh, the SAS route. So I'm going to stick with this congruence, the angles being congruent. So I'm thinking I'm going to go the SAS route, right? An angle and two sides. So next, I know that segment AB is congruent to segment DC. Again, they were given to me as congruent, but in a rectangle, you should know that the opposite sides are congruent, right? And there's a pair of sides. So in these two triangles, I have an angle pair, and now I have a side pair. So now I think the other side I need is down here at BC. Well, if you look at this triangle, ABC, BC is right here. It's the same exact side as BC over here. They are the overlapping parts, BC and CB, this side. So our next step is just going to say that segment BC is congruent to segment and I'll use correspondence CB, BC, CB. And that is just by the reflexive property. I think you've had a taste of the reflexive property in the last couple lessons. Here's another piece. And again, it's because it's the shared side. And I'll double mark it here and here. And now there is your second side for side, angle side. So these two triangles would be congruent. And that would be by side angle side congruence. So it is very important to be able to identify overlapping pieces because they're bound to help you prove your things and proofs. Okay, next example. All right, so uh, use common parts of triangles. We want to prove, or we want to say, is angle EGD congruent to angle EFH? So EGD is right here, and EFH is right here. Now, we potentially could try to work in this small triangle EFG, but I'm thinking we need to go a little bit bigger, right? EGD is in triangle EGD. So let's draw triangle EGD right here. So E, G, I, D. Oh my goodness, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can do better. I can do better, right? I know that E to D is horizontal. So let's try one more time. E is here. Let's go over to D. How about that? D is here. And then G is down this way. A little bit to the, oh, I, that might not even be better, but that's E, G, D. That's my best. I'm sorry. And then E, F, uh, one more time. I'm going to pause and do better. Uh, I promise. There we go. Yes. Okay, so there's EGD. And then over here, we're going to do 
the other triangle EFH. So E is here down to H over to F. All right, look at that. Now we're cooking with oil, right? There we go. Okay, sure. And right now, along DG, they have this point F. And they give me that that's congruent, so DF. And over here along HF, they have this point G. And that's congruent, right? And then they also gave us that segment DE is congruent to segment EH. And again, we want to prove that angle EGD, this angle, is congruent to EFH, that angle. Right? Well, in order to prove these two angles congruent, let's try to prove the triangles congruent, right? So let's prove, so prove... Uh, and I'll just name the triangles like this. Triangle EGD is congruent to triangle EFH. Okay. So uh, let's do this bottom side first, the, the side DG and HF, right? So because, because the triangles overlap between F and G, we know that that part is congruent to itself, right? So we can use little markings. I'll use three there and three there, which means that the entire length of that segment, I'll do it on purple, from D to G is made up of a single marked congruent side and a triple marked, and H to F is made up of a single marked and a triple marked. So when you add the DF and FG, you're going to get the same thing as when you add HG and uh, GF, right? So I'm going to say a couple things here. I'm going to say that uh, segment DF is congruent to segment HG, okay? And this was given to us. And I'm going to say that segment, and we'll do, again, FG is congruent to segment GF, and that's by reflexive. So then if we add these together, so DF, plus F G D F okay that is going to be the same as H G plus G F right and this is me using a little segment addition and some substitution segment addition postulate with some substitution I'm being very liberal in my proving and what does D F plus F G make well that just makes D G so we now know that segment GG is going to be congruent to, and what does HG plus GF make? That makes HF. Okay, and again, I'm going to put a big, that's, that's this whole thing. This whole thing is segment addition and substitution. And that got us one pair of sides. So this pair of sides is congruent all the way across. I'll do it in purple. So hopefully that makes sense to you. And again, in a proof, if you had to write it down, it would give you some steps to follow. Okay. All right. Now, we also know right, that DE was congruent to EH. That was given to us. So I'll put that here in blue. So segment DE is congruent to segment HE. So DE and HE, and that was given to us. But now look at the big triangle here. right? Because this big triangle has these two sides in it, now the big triangle, let's call it DEH, is isosceles. Okay? So triangle DEH is isosceles. And that's by the definition of isosceles triangle. By definition of isosceles triangle. Why this is helpful is now we know that the sides opposite these two congruent sides are congruent. So if this bottom side is the base, D to H, that means that angle D and angle H will be congruent. Angle D and angle H is a pair of angles in our triangles. So if we have these two sides congruent and these two sides, and now we have these corner angles, now I believe our triangles are congruent by side, angle, side, right? So we continue on this to talk about the angles. Uh, therefore, angle D is congruent to angle H. And that is by the isosceles triangle theorem. So I'm going to come over here. So now again, we know that triangle EGD is congruent to triangle EFH. And that is by side angle side congruence.
And if those two triangles are congruent, then all of the corresponding parts are congruent. So angle EGD is congruent to angle EFH. FH, sorry. And that is going to be by CP, CT, C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. There we go. All right, nice work. That's the first video. Uh, second video is coming up here shortly.